Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday podcast. I'm Big J. I'm RJ. And this week we've got a very special guest, a serial entrepreneur, serial car collector, car enthusiast, You'll businessman. And Siri. and Siri wants to get involved <laughs> as well today. <laughs> um, welcome. Thank you very much for coming on. You will appreciate it. How you doing, guys? You all right? Very, yeah, man. Very well. Thank you. Yourself? Yeah, we're here in sunny Leicester. <laughs> sunny Leicester. <laughs> <laughs> Always my, sunny my Leicester. Is so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been one of those days, isn't it? It has. It has, yeah. literally. How, do you, how often do you come back home, if you don't mind me asking? Um... I try and, well, when I first moved out many years ago, I yeah. was like every other, every weekend because yeah, I was missing yeah. home. Um, but life gets busy. I've got two boys at home. And uh, so I like to think I'll probably come back once a month at okay. the moment because there's a lot of activity I'm dealing with in Leicester. Yep. Um, we'll go over that in a bit. Yeah. So, but normally every two, three months I used to come, you know, come every back. Every two, three months. Yeah. 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 And it's changed a lot. <laughs> it does. It's yeah. changing a lot constantly. Yeah. Before yeah. we get this podcast obviously started, we want to give you a few gifts. Okay. Right. So, first of all, do you need my bank details? <laughs> no, actually, all free. Okay. The Friday podcast hoodie for you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Christmas time. Just appreciate that, boys. Also, we've got some Friday podcast air fresheners for your super cars. Thank air you. fresheners, because not just one car. <laughs> new car smell. And this is from one of our newest sponsors. It's from Zap Me Up. They do digital business cards, okay. and we made one for you. I had to go onto your LinkedIn. You probably see me viewing your profile. <laughs> stalking, so, did you say? On viewing? Yeah, yeah <laughs> stalking because I had to look at some of the links. But I'll okay. tell you what it does. Literally, just tap on the back of the phone. Don't mind. Oh wait, oh there it is. Perfect. Oh, here we go. go on. Oh, oh, fantastic. Loads up on your LinkedIn, your YouTube. I've got your personal page for the Instagram as well. <laughs> Make a stalker. Hey, he has proper stalked me. He <laughs> yeah, has done it. And I'm glad you're wearing the rose gold top because that's the way you done it. That's oh, exactly how I've done it. So once again, thank you. Oh, oh, fantastic. Morning. Morning to the podcast, Lovely. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. And I think there's one in there for you as well. Have you got one for me? Yeah, I've got one for you in there. <laughs> there you go. Oh, okay. So, Bav, um, yeah, we'll start right from the start. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Computer said no. <laughs> we'll sort that out. Um, yeah, where did you grow up? Where were you born? Family life when you were young? Born and bred in Leicester. Yep. Uh, Leicester Royal Infirmary. Um, and... Uh, I moved out when I was 21, uh, moved to London when I was 21 uh, in 1995. But yeah, I've been born and bred in Leicester. Mum and dad are from, um, from Africa. Yep. Um, they got together. They obviously uh, came to Leicester. Uh, I've got a little, you know, little sister. I said little sister, but it's a younger sister. Yeah. Um, and my mum and dad still live here. I've got a lot of family in Leicester and, uh, and obviously all over the world, like most Asians do. Um, <laughs> how was family life uh, when you were obviously growing up as a kid? Um, obviously, I know your mum and dad had a shop. So, yeah. business was it ingrained to you as a child? Do you think? Look, you know, when when my mum and dad bought the shop, I was six. Yeah. Um, they worked. You know, they 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 migrated to this country, so mm. the work ethic had to be there. They had to work. For yeah. yeah, they so had to. There was no day off. There was no holidays. There's no nothing. So. You know, when you're surrounded by that from the age of six, you have to you have to take what's in front of you, right? You learn from your surroundings, and it was full on. You know, you are a product so, of your environment, really, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely, it's seven, it's seven days a week. It's, oh yeah, it's, it's twelve. It's 14, life, isn't it? it's it literally life. But if you are born into it, that's all you know. Yeah, I agree. So there you go. Oh, there you go. It's a bit better now, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just coming off that. Like you said, um, being born into it and being part of your life. My mum, well, my dad and his brothers, they came into this country similar from Africa, from Mombasa, Kenya. Um, and then uh, just off Melton Road, they bought the first property, which then they used as a factory. So it's a house, but they used as a factory. They, they used to, it, it was their base first. Um, they used to do all the work from there. Then it grew. And then they moved the factory to Harrison Road, Mother Care, if you remember that. Yeah. That was my dad and his brothers. Okay. And then they moved it to Doncaster Road. So the factory on, the first factory, which I'm talking about, is on German Street. That was my first house after. So when the factory moved on to Harrison Road, German Street became my house. So that was my first ever house. So it was always, the business was actually my house. Yeah. So I kind of get where you're coming from. So, yeah, and then, 
I'll let you carry on. They, they sacrifice everything. For, you know, but, you know, they, that's, they did it for the kids. That's yeah. always been their ethic, right? You that's know, it. That's they, what they came a, a, for. Asian, mm. you know, the, the family bond and the way the families are and were back in the day was all about family. It's close knit. It's all about eating together, looking after each other. You work for your kids. You, you're building something for your children, right? Yeah. And then, you know, they, they want you to educate themselves. They don't want... They don't. They never wanted their kids to go through what they wanted to go through. Yeah, they exactly. went through sort of things. So, and they're always trying to better themselves. And the way they found to do it is by just sheer hard work. Hard work. Yeah. yeah. No, one hundred percent. Just pure hard work. I yeah. think it's that they were sorry talking. They were thinking about generational wealth before yeah. they even kind of knew what generation generational wealth. Uh, generational wealth was yeah. they always knew that mm -hmm. we're doing this for our kids and we always want to leave something for them they always say I've read somewhere that you know our our parents they're like the last generation of that sort of you know that innocent sort of thing that hard working sort of generation yeah but do you not think we're a bit you know but social media the, the environment the world has oh, changed oh 100% you know, 100% you know, it has changed the, 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 you know, the way people are brought up has been changed yeah. you know look you know when I was a kid um, you know, my mom and dad's shop was opposite um, what used to be called Nabisco. It's a biscuit factory, right? Okay. Oh. And then it changed to Jacobs. And people used to come to the shop and they'd be working in a biscuit factory for 15, 16, 20 years, right? Oh. Long, you'd, you'd get a job for life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now you get a job for months. Yeah. You know, people, yeah, that's true. Job, people job... Job, jump, up. job, job, all yeah. the time, all the time. You know, literally. before you go and get a job in a company or or an office, yeah. You oh, uh, you know, so and so has been here ten years, twelve years, fifteen years. Mm. You're there, you're set. Yeah. yeah. Now it's not that that's gone. You know, and it is. You, you look back when my mom and dad were working. It was all as always about get a good job, settle down, buy a house, blah. You know, yeah. that sort of situation you'd be in. Now it's rent everything. Mm. Yeah, know, it literally. Rent, is. Lease the car, rent your phone. You know, so it is. the whole thing has changed, I think. And also, um, do you do you think that obviously your parents own business? It was a shop, but it was still their own business. Did yeah. you think I'm never going? I don't really want to work for someone. I always you always wanted to own your own business. Not initially, no, no. Um, because what I what I I always wanted to learn stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, and for me, what what taught me about being around my mum and dad was there was no days off. If you yeah. want something, there is no days off. Yeah. Mm. You've got to do everything. Well, you can't call in sick, right? You can't go, oh, today I don't fancy opening the shop. It's not going to work. Gonna go, I'm just going to go and chill today. Yeah. You, that didn't happen. You had commitments. You have to be committed. Yeah, your clients ain't calling in sick. No. Yeah. So what's, what's, what's helped me when I first got my job when I moved to London is I treated that business like my own business. There was no days off, no sick days. Mm. I treated it like my own business and the people I was working with and working for recognised that and elevated me for what, from where I was to what I did. Because they went, well, we don't actually need to, I own the business, I don't need to be here, you're running it like your mm. own. Yeah, it's yeah. trust. Yeah. You know, because I don't go, well, actually, it's, it's six o'clock, my, my work phone's off. That doesn't it happen. Doesn't, it doesn't go off. What? It does for some, but mm. if you treat it the way I treated it yeah, when yeah. I started, it's helped me get that bit further yeah let me i don't have a personal number this is my work number personal number yeah. mm -hmm. recently what i've done i'm an mot tester sorry yeah. so recently what i've done i've tried to move everything online but my dad works with me my brother works with me and my dad's old school yeah come bring it my dad uh, i'm yeah. the tester my son will do it now my son will do it now but it didn't work and he he knows it doesn't work but that's just how he is because that's all how yeah. they've always been yeah. but now i'm trying to like organize it kind of thing and it's working better and it just makes, obviously, it makes my business look more precious, oh, if you 100%. know what I mean. But, um, yeah, coming back to... Yeah, so, yeah, you know, you know the, eth the work ethic is there, and that's one of the things I learned. And the thing is, if you want to do something with your life, yeah. you have to work. Yeah, you have to. There's, there's, there's no easy way. If it's, if it's quick and easy, it goes quick yeah. and easy. Oh, well, yeah, it does, 100%. And that is the truth. I mean... Got everyone being stubborn no, cryptocurrency and, and, left, no, right, and centre. But everyone now, you yeah. know what it is. The problem is now we've got social media. You've got someone who's showing more than they've got, real, and it's not real. Yeah. You know they think, oh yeah, but he's got a sports car, a Ferrari, Lamborghini. And he's doing this and doing this. That's what you're seeing, and people are believing it. Exactly. And that's the and thing. they're they're aspiring to be like that as well. Some of them. Exactly. And and it's not you know for me it's hard work 
it's difficult because obviously I think people look at the final results and they see like the Lambos, the cars and everything, but they don't see how that person got to that place. Do you know what I mean? And no, they don't. And the thing is, it's, it's the same as a footballer, right? Yeah. Everyone thinks they can play football. Mm. Only 0.1% of whatever the statistic is get through. Actually make right? it. Yeah. yeah, actually make it. That's actually making it. And it's, you, but you see everything, you know, oh, he's a footballer, but it doesn't work that way. You know what? Yeah. It just literally, I keep coming off the back of him, but, um, so I've got a customer, but he's also my dad's mate. Everyone's my dad's mate. Um, his son is 16, but he's a semi-professional footballer now. And I didn't know this till this week, but they're obviously they're from Leicester, but his son lives in Derby. And he goes to me, oh yeah, my son's fostered. I said, how come your son's fostered? Like, I, I gave him that kind mm. of look. He goes, oh no, it's not like that. The football, because he plays football, he has to be there seven days a week. And he is he's based in Derby. So he's found a football foster parent kind of thing. Mm. And that's how that's how hard it is, and that's how much that's how much effort they have to put in. Yeah, it's crazy. And he's a sixteen year old, and Mark goes, "Oh, it was very hard for me to hand over my child to like a random person, but for his career, this is what I had to do." And he goes, "He's sixteen now. We've been going six days a week since he was four years old." But you know, the good thing is he'll learn a lot of discipline from that as well. Yeah. That's my, that's big. He'll learn a lot of discipline. I mean, yeah. when you were younger, what motivated you? Do you think that to get up and get it? <clears throat> Initially, um, when I was younger. It, there was no motivation. <laughs> I was a, I was like a typical teenager bum, you know. Yeah. I'm sleeping into whenever my mum had to rattle me out of bed. You know, it, you don't. It, something has to click. Yeah. No one can give. No one. If you someone says to you, you must do this, it's never going to work, no. right? It, you have to do it yourself. yourself. It, it, it has to click in yourself. Mm. And I was very fortunate when I first moved to London. The guy I work for, um, in directly became my mentor. Okay. You call it a mentor today. Then he was just my boss and yeah. I learned from my boss. Yeah. You know, I learned from my environment. I learned from him. But in theory, when I look back, I think to myself, you actually became my mentor without you being my mentor. Yeah. And you mm. taught me things. And he taught me two things, how to do it and how not to do it. Yeah. You need to know both. Yeah. You do. And, and he didn't get it right all the time, but I learned. From his mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the things I'd tell anyone. And not just in business, sorry. I think that's in life. In life. But I think so. Because look, how many... I think so, too many kids, too many younger people today think they know too much. Yeah. They know yeah. it all. They oh, no, I know it. They, the access to information. And I was the same. Yeah. When I was a kid growing up, I was the same, but it ain't the case. It never is. You never know it all. Every day is the same. Knowledge is power. You, you only learn, know what you know. Right? every day. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, so moving to London, do you think, this was one of my main questions, the move from moving from Leicester to London, was that a big change? And do you think that helped in your path, in your career? Do you think without that, you wouldn't be where, where you are at the moment? i tell you what happened when I moved to London. There's no safety net. Yeah. There is nothing. There's not mummy cooking dinner. <laughs> You're out there. There's, there's no mummy coming and cleaning your room. There's no one doing your washing. There's no one doing nothing. There's apps. You're, on your, you're on your own. Yeah. And your back's against the wall. Now, do you want to come back home failed? Are you going to sit there and go, well, I, I, I failed, I, I can't have come back? Because your parents will have to be in shame and yeah. even you don't want to give that I, shame I, I, to them. And you want personal want to, things, you like, don't no, want listen, to listen, I've been given down. an opportunity here. Yeah. You can do two things. I can either roll into the office at one minute to nine and leave at one minute past six. Yeah. Or I can actually do something about this and make it mine and run with it properly. Yeah. So I did. And, and it was, you know, you have to put your big boy pants on. And you have to do stuff. And listen, I, for the first six months while I was there, I slept on the floor because there was no furniture. I had an empty flat. I had a blow up mattress. I slept on the floor for six months. But that's what makes you. That's what helps you grow. I think everyone that like, you need, everyone successful has been through something similar. And they've, that's like, they're not rock bottom, but that's where they started from. So your yeah. starting point was that yeah. Yeah. coming from literally si sleeping in the mattress. And then was it working? The I, I didn't have a direct debit from my mom and dad. Yeah. I learned straight away very quickly, very independently, financially dealt with myself and what I was doing. And that's what helped me grow. You know, Looking you like, do. speaking to you about your mindset at that time was really strong. But did you have some days where you just thought, I can't do this no more. I want to get At least in. once a week, twice yeah. a week. Fair. Of course, you mean, you're, you're in an environment where all, I've had all my friends from Leicester, mm. right? You go anywhere, you're, you know, your friends, you're going out, you've got a social, you got a so whole social yeah, it's home right? minute it's home S social environment I was growing up with friends mm. that were out we were out most nights had a, co a great cushy job yeah. easy job I was living at home no rent to pay da 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 and all of a sudden bang you're on your own 
There's no yeah. friends. And it's not like before. You couldn't FaceTime anyone. This is 1995. Yeah. <laughs> you so know, literally at yourself. the very best, yeah. you're texting someone and they're not getting that text anyway. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so yeah. this is 1995, <laughs> right? So it's not like you can just pop on FaceTime or do a Zoom call and say, hi, mum, how you doing? How's mates? The- whatever. <laughs> it, it, no, no, no. But, and also... Your mates are going out on Wednesday. Mm. Or they're going out on Thursday. I can't just come back for a night out. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. You know? So yeah, it's a it's a you have to, you know, it's a bit of a learning curve, really. And then um how did the career work up in London? You started working for someone. How were you financially just before you went to London? Did you already have like money saved up from something you did here no, or I was on hundred pounds a week. Okay. That's what I earned. So wow. the, the mobile phone shop I was working for um in on London Road, I was being paid hundred pounds a week. Was that a major retailer or was that like a... No, he was an independent retailer. He had uh, four or five branches. Yeah. Um, it was a, a company based in Market Harbour. It's a company called Wellcom. And I still speak to Chris who employed me back in the day and I keep telling him he owes me some commission. <laughs> um, so my salary was £5,200. £100 a week, £5,200. That was my That's salary. That's crazy. Plus commission. That was it. And then um, how did that all change when you went to London? You well, went- I, yeah, so the, I went to London, went, did this interview, got the job. I thought I hit the jackpot. <laughs> Shall I tell you why? Because he's giving me eight grand a year now. And I'm Big like, oh, rise. mate, I've got a pay rise here. <laughs> I'm in it, you know. Um, he gave me a pay rise, but the commission. So I thought, listen, you just got to try it. Gotta yeah, put, why not? And then, but the commission then was, uh, right, it was out of this world. Yeah. You know, um, was that when mobile phones were just getting... We were... We were one-to-ones or T-Mobile one-to-one at the time, three evenings and weekends. Mm -hmm. We were their main reseller. They were throwing money at us to get customers hand over fist. Yeah, I kind of got commission figures were ridiculous, right? So we were, when I first joined the company, we were selling 30 to 40 phones a day, right? By the time I finished, we were doing a thousand phones a day. How did you scale that up? So the the difference was, is that we had a call center Mm. And you ring up and say, I'm interested in buying a mobile phone. Our, ma- our sales pitch was, yeah, I can give you this, this and this, and you will have it delivered within two hours. Ooh. Oh, wow. And so what year was this? 1995. Ooh. In 1995. So we had 18 drivers on the road by the time I finished. Was this all in one city in Leicester? I mean, um, you were basically, no, we, were, we were doing up and down the country by the time we finished. We had a driver Ooh. in Scotland, Manchester, we had two. Birmingham, we had two. And then we started advertising in the papers. We had an advertisement on the TV. Uh, the idea was you order a phone and you get it straight away. Yeah. And you don't get on tra- demand. That's like basically on demand. Like, that's Uber Eats for mobile. Isn't that's it? what they did, yeah. <laughs> Back in the day, in because 95. 95. Because the fight between one to one and orange yeah. was on. Yeah, so they yeah, wanted yeah. the customer. So yeah. if I got you as a one to one customer, you ain't moving. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're in, yeah. you're stuck. When you're sticky, should we say, <laughs> right? So they wanted customers. So we ramped that business and they paid us a lot of money to get customers. So marketing budgets was like money, yeah. no object, advertising in the sun, the star, the paper, you name it, we did the whole thing. And people were ringing up saying, I've just seen your advert for a mobile phone. How do I get one? And that's as quickly as it was. How did you get into the recycling side of it all then? Because I, I know you did a lot of work with the recycling side. Yeah. So after working in the first cup business, I got, I'd done what I did. I, you know, I, I did as much as I could do there. Uh-huh. So we grew it, got paid phenomenally well. Going back to cars, I bought my first Porsche before I was 25, box ticked, bought a flat, box ticked, and I was like, this is, I've done really well. And I, and I said to Russell at the time, look, I've done everything now. I'll, I, I can do this with my eyes closed now. I need mm. another challenge. And then I got headhunted to, um, from another company that sold accessories. Did you, sorry, did you get bored? Like, you know how you said you've done it all, you've done the two tick boxes. Were you said, obviously, did that, the motivation level go down a bit and thinking I've done it now? Or were you looking for a new challenge anyway? I wasn't. I wasn't because you know there's always it's always evolving, but it's never as much as building it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then um, I got headhunted to accessory business, same sort of principle. Yeah. They were turning over two million quid. I ramped it up to sixteen million quid. Got great business, and that was it. So in two thousand and five, mm. I was like, I'm done. I've, I, I've done that for six years, and I thought, I'm, I'm out. I'm going to do yeah. property now. Yeah. So I'd invested wisely, saved up, and whatever, um, and I thought, I'm going to do property, and then. In 2005, at my leaving party, the guy um, who subsequently became my partner said, I'm going to set up my own company. Why don't you come and help me? I said, I don't want to go back into this technology game. It's not interesting. No, no, no. We want to, let's let's do something. I said, all right, look, I'll invest in it, but I don't want to work there. I'll do a couple of days. But the problem is you get sucked in, right? Yeah. So, you know, from 2005, 2006 to 2019, 
we set up a mobile phone accessory business, yeah. but the primary focus being recycling. So when the laws and the things of, of what you can and can't recycle in 2007, yeah. we went with that. We went with the wave. We created the wave. Yeah. We helped write the legislation. We helped write the rules. And then we policed the rules. So we said, you can't just throw your mobile phone in the bin. You've got to recycle it properly, ethically. I noticed that because at this, at one point, there was a point where people stopped selling their phones. And yeah. people started going to com- going to places and recycling the phones. Correct. And then you had recycle websites compared Mizuma to Mobile, different all different kind of different ones. Mizuma, Mizuma Mobile, yeah. Mobile, yeah. Mobile, Envira, Mobile, yeah. Mobile.com, Envira, like loads but, of different ones. But if you... If, but, you think about this worldwide, mm. right? This is not just, we didn't do UK, we went we world, worldwide. You can't just throw your phone in the bin. No, you can't. So it has to be ethically recycled. Yeah. So there's lots of things we did around that. Um, and then tw- that, I did that up until 2019, again, ticked all the boxes. And then 2019, I'm like, um, I'm out, I'm done. <laughs> um, and then COVID happened, didn't it? So. <laughs> was that for, you know, when you're doing the handsets, was that for like, completely damaged phones like you're taking beyond the VR phones and were you taking like ones we t- that were we working? We took everything. Everything, so okay. We, 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 we use a term called harvesting. Okay. Um, so we could turn one good phone out of three good phones. Yeah. Or we could recycle them. We could wa- we had to wipe the data for some people. Yeah. So we worked with every network in the world you can imagine. So all the European networks, oh, North America, you know, threes, the sure? Vodafones, etc. So we did all that for the retailers. Um, we helped you may not know. You remember the brand Nokia? Yep. Right? <laughs> yeah. I'm 34, I don't know. <laughs> I love Nokia. So Nokia phones. So when Nokia stopped doing phones, yeah. Yeah. they had warehouses around Europe full of product. Yeah. yeah. Components, phones, accessories. Yeah. You name it, they had everything. You can't just throw it in the bin. No, you can't. So we helped recycle all of that uh, and try and put to purpose. So we, we did a lot around that. Um, but yeah, so it's sort of, we, re- we acted and reacted to the market very quickly. But yeah. it's all around recycling. So again, like you've caught the wave twice now. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we got to COVID. Yeah. Um, did you have any time off in COVID? Did you have to have any time no, off? Well, t- in 2019, when I, my, me and my business partner, mm. we, we, we went and I said, you've got to buy me out and whatever. And we did the whole thing. Um, and that was in October 2019. So between that and 2020, March, when lockdown sort of happened, that six months was, a uh, how can I put it? Um, not a great time for me personally. Because if you can imagine, I've had a, a career spanning where you've done everything, you're doing everything, then all of a sudden it's like, Stop. it's turned off. Yeah. Right? So you can imagine your mindset. Don't know what to do with your life. Well, oh, did, do you think it gave like time to find yourself again? You don't know that at the time, do you? Yeah. You think, hold on, my phone. I'm getting th- I, was, I, was, I was like, mm. it's like, you're like a bit of a drug addict, right? You're getting 300 emails a day. Your phone's going off. You've got two phones. You and all of a sudden, everything's yeah. like cut off. Nothing. There's nothing there. It's like, no, you get two emails. Yeah. One's from Amazon. It's crazy. Uh, and one's from Sainsbury's. You know? <laughs> That's it, was, it. it was a weird time. And it, it just dies. And then you find out who your friends are. Yeah, 100%. Because that's, that's a key element. Speaking to you, like, you see, like your guy always on the go. That must have been a pretty difficult time then. Cause it's, it's forced, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's forced. You know, you cut, but you sort of think, I reflected. I then spend time with my family. Right. Um, you end up spending time with your friends, your proper friends. And you start spending quality time with mm. these things. Lockdown happened. Everyone's in the same boat. Yeah. And then you evolve, don't you? And then you start getting the momentum back. You start thinking. Because I didn't want to rush. I mean, listen, I had investments in various businesses. Yeah. But I didn't want to just jump in a business. I didn't want to just jump into mm. something. I wanted to think about what I was going to do. I, don't, I, didn't, I was fortunate enough. I've worked hard enough to not have to do anything. So anything I do, I want to do. Yeah, I don't. You, need, I don't need to do anything. I and you, you probably enjoy doing it. It's something that absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, just a quick one. Then jumping in, the WhatsApp um, shopping channel. When was that? Was that before COVID? Um, no, that was after COVID. So that was last year. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, it was last year when my, you know, a friend of mine rings me up and goes, "Do you want to buy a shopping channel?" <laughs> and I send me the details and he WhatsApp me the details and he said it's going to go under they're going to close the doors it's in administration and off the back of a fag packet literally we went oh, yeah go on in they we'll do it yeah do the deal did you take it on as uh, like a personal challenge or you, yeah you have a team behind you and then just... initially um, I took it on as can I do it you know you don't need to test yeah. yourself 
Was it something yeah. like you, did you have a, like a bit of background information about it or did you? Just... Yeah, I listened. My due diligence took me a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> LinkedIn, um, but, but it, it, listen, you got you got to smell the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Um, and listen, you got to run with it. And for me, it was a test. Can I do it? Can I get back in the game and run? Listen, it was seven hundred people in the building, and then it whittled it down to five hundred, then two fifty. It's a it's, it's a TV shopping channel. This is no joke. Yeah, they're broadcasting TV on ITV on Sky Virgin Freeview. And it's going under. Can you can you do? Can you save it? Can you do anything with it? Can you make it work? And the answer was yes. It was losing a million pound a month. But how? What did? How would you even know what to do? Right. It's quite, Where to start? It's, you know. Is there a blueprint? Yeah. This is my question. Is yeah, there like a blueprint there must that, what, with a business? If you bring, if you put me in any business, yeah, what, would yeah. I, what would I do? First? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you put me in any. It doesn't matter what the business does. Yeah, you yeah. put me in a business. I'll tell you what I'm going to do first. Look at the people. Yeah. Forget what they do, forget the process, forget the, the product, people. It's the three Ps. People is first. Yeah. yeah. Right? And when you say people, do you mean how they are or do you look at the background? Do you look at the education, where they've been, or no, everything? The whole holistic view. Have I got the, listen, not, you can't have 11 strikers on the pitch. Yeah. You can't. 100%. You've got to have the right team. Yeah, you've got to play your position. You've you got to analyse everyone in the business. Right? Do they serve a purpose? Listen, I bet there's, biz- there's people, you've, you've probably come across businesses and there's probably people in your business that you've got there through loyalty, not through skill. Yeah. Right, yeah. Oh, mate, he's always been here. He's been here 15 years. He's part years. of furniture. He's part of furniture. <laughs> oh, would you employ him today? No, I bloody wouldn't. Yeah. So you've got all this thing. So you've got people in the business that are in for loyalty. So I'd come and look at all your, bi- I look at the business and go, is the right person doing the right job? Mm. Okay, or, and have we got any complacent people? Are people there for the job or are they there really for the business? Yeah. You know, if you turn around to someone and say, listen, actually, this month I can't pay you. Mm. Oh, what they gonna, what's their reaction going to yeah, be? Yeah, exactly. Are they turning up at 9.01 in the morning? And if you ask them to stay back 10 minutes, they're asking you tomorrow, listen, I stayed back 10 minutes, I want it back. What kind of people have you got in your business? Yeah. Have you got, if you've got those nine to fivers, you know, as I call them Dolly Partons, mm. right? You've got to assess Every person in that business. Now, in every business, they're not going to be there all day, every day. I get that. You're going to have... But you've got to have the team, the mix. Yeah, 100%. Right? So put the people in there right. The second thing is the process. Is the process right? Or does it all rely on one person? Oh, yeah, well, he's a control... Fr- is there, if you can't have control freaks in a business, you've got to let the business run. Yeah. You've got, you, if you've got the right people, trust the people. Give the process. You don't need to check everything. Trust them. No micromanaging kind of thing. You got the you, first thing you've done is check the people, right? Yeah. So you check the people. Here's the keys. Mm. You don't need to wait outside to open the door. Here, have you go. You can do. Listen, most people don't get it, right? They go, oh, yeah, but if I give them keys to the building, they could do something, nick something. They could do more damage while they're using your phone mm. in the business. Yeah, no. They could do more no damage cu- talking to your customer than nicking something from your building. So it's very true, man. My, my mechanic has keys to our business. You know, Thomas, yeah. he has keys. No. Why, has he got, why has he got keys? Because he likes to start work before we even come. We and he him. likes to, you yeah, yeah, him, we trust right? him. Yeah. And he likes to finish after we've done his yeah, work. Yeah, no, yeah, but you he, trust him, right? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Exactly. He's like, he's, like, he's like family, basically, isn't it? Yeah, but the thing is, you have to try. If you've got the right people, yeah. then it doesn't matter, does it? Yeah. Then you've got the people. Then you've got the process, right? The process is correct. What happens if that happens? What happens if that happens? Hmm. A lot of businesses I go into, and a lot of people, people are great. It all works out. Process. Why do you do it like that? We've always done it like that. Well, have you considered changing it? No, no, we've always done it like that. Exactly. And, and that, that is a problem. Mm-hmm. That 100%. Is a, that, that is a problem. It is. Because do you think a lot of businesses are, are like scared of change right now because of what climate that we're in? It's, I, if they change something and I, it's not going to work. Okay, let me ask you another question. Go for it. Right, in a business, <laughs> uh, let's use food, right? Okay. If you've only been ever fed baked beans, mm. right? How do you know what spaghetti tastes like? You've got you've got to take the risk. You have to. You don't know, do you? You don't know. You don't know, do you? You don't even know spaghetti you exists, know. right? Because yeah. all you've done is two tins of beans every day, right? Beans, yeah. So if I come into you and say, listen, why do you do it like that? Well, that's the way I've always done it. I've always baked. I'm, a, I'm Mr. Baked Beans. Yeah. Right? No, no. Introduce you to this. This is called spaghetti. Yeah. You don't, you've never heard of it. Mm. This is a new thing. So it's all about opening your mind. Yeah. It's opening the way to think. And that 
boils back down to people. If your people are going to be closed minded, yeah. it's never going to work. Yeah. You have to have the right people. Just quickly, again, going off the back of that, what I agree, I completely agree with what Bob said, but also like my dad, he doesn't know how to use technology and he's not open minded, like he said as well, to try to use to it. But now it. I've kind of ingrained it. I go, dad, if you want to book an MOT, if your person comes in and says, think there's no book anymore, the book doesn't exist. Mm. You have, dad, I've put it on your phone, bookmarks. Here's how to go on it. And then you book it yourself. No, yeah, well, no, you have you to, you have to. So now I'm trying to like get him to change. It's technology. He doesn't understand technology. He's telling me, oh, there's customers like me that doesn't understand, don't understand technology. So I could do it for them now. I've taught you how to do it. Yeah, now you no. teach them. You're right, 100%. But it's also people or, or bosses yeah. are sometimes fearful of other people doing the job better than them. Yeah. Especially if it's not family. If it's family, obviously they don't mind. You know, th th that's insecurity. Yeah. Listen, I'd love for... I'd love to own a business and someone do the job better than better me. Than that me. means I've done a, that's me. I've done a great <laughs> job there, haven't I? Yeah. First, you've got the right person. Exactly. So people, then the process. Process is right. Everything works. And the last thing is the product. Doesn't matter what the product is. If the first two are right, you can sell to anything. Things, you know, you can sell whatever you want, or you could provide a service for whatever you want. But you've got to get the first two right. So that's the first thing I look at. Because the other thing I say is that let's say you go shopping and you've got fruit in your basket. Yeah. If you've got rotten fruit, you don't put the new fruit on top, do you? Exactly. Same as people. If you've got a rotten person, if you've got a toxic person in your business, yeah. why are you going to employ new people? What do you think the first thing they do when they go out for lunch? Oh, mate, I've been here this, but I've been here two years and this place is a shit. Oh. <laughs> can't wait to get there. I can't wait to it's get like there. A oh, cancer, the boss is a tosser <laughs> and this is that. And, oh, mate, honestly, I, you've already... You, Toxic. Yeah, it's like a cancer in the workplace. Yeah. yeah. No, I get Even that. another yeah. analogy that uh, my teachers used to tell me, it's like um, it's my business teacher, Mr. Patel, big him up. It's like um, a circuit board. If one part of the circuit board is missing, the circuit doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. It's broken. The light bulb won't light. It's literally just just the one. If literally one one part doesn't work, so it has to be the right people have to be there to make that circuit work, basically. Yeah, you're gonna need the people on the front. You're gonna need the people in the back. <laughs> okay so how do you stay motivated and handle setbacks and what advice would you give anyone finding it hard to take setbacks um <clears throat> how do i stay motivated um i'm in a fortunate position that i i do what i enjoy yep. so i am motivated by virtue of what i'm doing yeah um it's not always the same i have bad days some days i wake up and i'm thinking oh jesus christ what am i doing you know where, what's going on and you just have to have routine. The way to stay motivated and to stay on track is have routine. Yeah. You know, if you have a set routine within reason and you know what you've got to do and then you keep going. Setbacks, have them all the time. Rejection, get it all the time. But it's not, you know, it's how you deal, deal with, with it. it. Yeah. It's how you deal with it. Of course, you, listen, you're going to get let down in anything mm. you do. You're going to get let down. You're going to let yourself down. You're not going to get the result you wanted to get. Right, Hussein Bolt didn't just go and beat the world record every time, did he? <laughs> no. He's, he's failed, he's failed, he's failed, he's failed. He's yep. You know, he's, he's done what he's done for years of failure, but he still kept on going. So yeah, rejection's a hard one, especially when you're trying to do something. And, and some, I've, I've, I tell you what I struggle with is the people that I'm trying to help but don't realise they're being helped. Yeah. Now, I'll give you a, a real live example, right? <clears throat> this week, or like, yeah, this week we put out um, about we wanted a clothing partner. Yeah, to I've work seen with, that. Right? Please drop us an email. So we put it out there, and loads of emails come back. I replied to those emails more or less immediately. There was a loads of emails. Email. Um, this is what we're looking for. This is what we're doing. Please, you know, please feel free to give me a call. My mobile number is on the bottom of the email. Yeah. Right. The first few emails that came in, I did it straight away. You know what the response I got was? Yeah, no problem. I'll give you a call tomorrow. <laughs> You're lying. No, I'm not. Do you know what? We specialise in clothing and I've actually been told, like, <laughs> make sure you have a conversation with him. <laughs> would you, why would you want to call me that. tomorrow? I'm saying to you, call me. I, I, don't I think that's the difference between the go-getters and I'll do it tomorrow. I was like, here's my, here's my, listen, if this is what we can do, I'd love to have a conversation. It's a big opportunity blah, blah, blah. as well for someone. Give me a it? shout, give me a call, my num you know, give me a call. For someone that's... I left it open on purpose, you know yeah, why? Yeah. Because I wanted to test the water. Yeah. So I'm like, give me a call um, and then and, and we could have a conversation. We'll yeah, no problem, I'll give you a call tomorrow. One of them was like, I'll give you a call tomorrow. I'm like, okay. Well, then another came in, I'll give you a call tomorrow. 
Another woman. And I was like, oh my days. Did they like, not even ask you if you're free now? No, you know yeah. what it is as well? It, you know, Which, the, the lion's share of the emails I got back were either not... A, let me ask you a question. How Go soon would you expect to reply back? So if I sent you an email at five o'clock, yeah. right? And said, hi, you know, hi, I'm, I'm, I could do yeah, something for yeah, you. Yeah. How soon would you reply, would you expect to reply back? I literally instantaneously because it's like it depends you know, on the person for me actually you know yeah, it, that's the problem the, yeah, yeah. that is the key isn't it, it because some of these people replied back instantly some Bob, of, Bob some replied back to me instantly so Jesus, basically for me just, again, should, should I tell you why it's a I, I have a zero inbox mentality that's why yeah, my inbox is clear oh, this is the same thing like at work I because obviously I work with the North American all North American businesses and yeah. obviously the hours I work are really Off, weird hours right, yeah. yeah I finish at 10.30 at night and um, like it's instantaneous. If if I've if I've got someone telling me, "Hey, I'm interested," that's a hot lead. I'm not, why, why would I not want to call it straight you, away? You've got to you, honestly, create I'll, an urgency. I, it it's not the first time. It's not the first time. It happens all the time. No, I find that it happens all the time. <laughs> that I find it. Bit I think it's just that uh, mindset in it. The get yeah, up and go, and right. I'll do it tomorrow. Mindset. You have to go and get it. Yeah. That's the way it is, unfortunately. Um, okay, so going back then, um, Yan, meeting Yanni, mass business. Did you know him before that, or? Yeah, I've known Yanni for years, ten plus, twelve, fourteen years, whatever. I've known Yanni um, back in the day, um, so I've known him for a long time. And then um, an opportunity came about in, uh, you know, just under three years ago. Had a conversation about doing things, and then, lo and behold, very quickly we recognised each other's strengths, and we became business partners. And do, do you think that's integral um, with being a business partner with someone? You've got to understand and acknowledge their strengths and weaknesses at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, what I do, Yanni doesn't do. What Yanni does, yeah. I don't do. Yeah. Straightforward. You know, that's the, that's the team. That's people. That's the first thing. Mm. And, and we, we don't... And one of the other things is when you look at any business, no matter whether it's a coffee shop or whether it's a, a multi-billion pound business, egos... Yeah. I'm the boss. I'm gonna do this. I'm the. I started this. This is my baby. Put, you know. Yeah. It, you know the big CEO comes in and he wants to park in his space and or your dad, for example, if he went around strutting in the MOT centre, yeah. going, I'm the boss. <laughs> you know, you do as I say. Forget my son. Yeah, 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 you yeah, do yeah. this. You do this. <laughs> well, this is you, this is what affects businesses. Oh yeah, yeah, massively. This is what affects businesses. And so, with me and we and Yanni, we've got a unique relationship in which. He knows my strengths. I work on my strengths. He works on his, and we get on and we do what we do. Yeah. And you're better together as a team 100%. instead of being. Uh, yeah, that's what. We're so talking. when you like you said you met twelve years ago, but like they always say you shouldn't get into business with a friend because it's it it could go down a rocky path. Have you always? Do you always do you fear for that? Uh, no, we've learned. We've both had. Yeah. We've both both been in you know um, uh, businesses before. We're a lot wiser. We're a lot older. We're a lot more mature. We're a lot more honest. And I guess you know. Um, I guess you both know what we're not blagging each, each other. Yeah, exactly. You know. You know. You know. We're not. You know. We didn't go into this relationship and me you know, saying I can do this and I can do this and I can do. I was. We're quite open and honest with what we with each other. Mm. And it's like anything, isn't it? You don't find out what you can't do. You be open and honest, so there's no surprises. And I guess that comes with maturity. Yeah. It comes with maturity and it comes with experience. Because then you are very clear in what you can and can't do. Massively. So um, when you went in there, did you just go 50-50 with the whole Yanomai's Yana group? Like the competitions? I know the... you've been on Company's House. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so if, you, if, if, if you've done the research, yeah. then you know we're 50-50 and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything that's Yanomai's, we created a group structure and then all the all the subsidiary companies went in there and went. Did, did that happen after you came in, or did he animate? Yeah, 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 after, yeah. yeah. Uh, that is one of my skills. <laughs> so and was re it restructure with Yanni? Was it a different, uh, difficult conversation, or was, was it something you always knew would happen eventually? Um, the way I see it is, we both won the lottery, so yeah. it's not a difficult conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. win-win. So win, win. This is a this is a mutual win-win situation. I get to do what I am good at. He gets to do what he's good at, and we come together. And that's the way it works. So what what is like what is what is the goal with the NMIs at the end? What is the main goal? What is like So the main goal is to continue what we're doing but okay. elevating the brand and getting the brand out more. That is it. Hence, you wanted to make a, a household name and and everyone who I've spoke to 
I think it may be my age group. It might be where I'm from. Everyone knows the animals. Literally everyone who has yeah, spoken, they might same. be a bit older than me. Yeah. Obviously the younger people definitely know. And even if they don't know, and I tell them, oh, it's that company that wraps celebrity cars. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen them. I've seen them. I know what you're on about. And I reckon making a household name is <laughs> Well, the thing is, it's it's there. Is. Yeah, but the, yeah, it is within reason. Look, I'll give you a prime example. And the way I always compare it to is like the Beckham effect. Okay. You don't need to know about football to know about David Beckham. Beckham is, yeah. Right? You don't know. You don't need to know anything about football. Yeah. You don't need to know anything about his past and Man United. He, you know David Beckham, right? Yeah. Yanomise is known, very well known. Yep. But it's not to everyone. It's not the Beckham. Yeah. And the goal is always to become the Beckham. Okay, fair. So you are known. Hence, you know, we we did the deal with Everlast and we are in we went into Sports Direct yeah. with all the clothing. Hence, we're in Halfords. So the average, you know, there may be 20% of the Halfords customer that doesn't even know Yanomise. Or twenty five percent, maybe. Don't but they have to walk a town. And now they're looking at it and going, "Jesus Christ, we're, you're at the till. <laughs> well, what is this guy? Mm. Who is this guy? What is this brand?" Yeah. So it's all about using the brand and doing the events, doing the tour again, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's it's all about the brand. Um, when you went into this um, Yanomai's company, did you have to do the three P's again, or did you first go and look at and do your three P's and then uh, you made your decision? Enough that Yanni at the time had a great team. Yep. And, and a great bunch of people um, and we added more to it but as we added it's I use the first P get the right people, people yeah. and that's what it is and, and, and we're luckily enough we've got a great team okay so um, Leicester Motor Show told me you've taken it over <laughs> yeah be... so last well, earlier this year we decided to do car car events yep yeah. um, so we did the first one at Mercedes so I had a conversation with Mercedes Benz World we did an event there yeah it was you know, a thousand cars and two, three thousand people. It was, it was a great event. We very quickly did another one. And then after that, um, I wanted to do something in Leicester. Well, I'm from Leicester. Oh, I thought yeah, it's in the middle of the country. We can't just do events in the London area. Yeah. We need to venture up north. So yeah. I'm thinking, let's get up that M1. We want to do something in Leicester. Yeah. We want to do something in Manchester. So, And there is a car culture as well. It's huge. I mean, you've got some. You've got some certain individuals. We won't mention any names. I've got some serious numbers of cars. Uh, uh, that, Do you call it? I call it hoarding. You know, I think it's a hoarder because it, you know, know hoarders. Yeah, they don't sell. They just buy, buy, well, buy. Just keep buying. But yeah. you'd be mad if you had like 150 and, cars plus. Right? And what they do? They've got a trick. They put the cars on yeah. for a price that they know no one's going to buy it. So they get to keep it. Yeah, 100. <laughs> not a bad idea. Right? Yeah, it's not. It's <laughs> not. <laughs> keep what you want. But you, you're going to have to talk to a couple of people. About that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so look, we had a conversation with the, with the guys here. I mean, the Leicester Motor Show has been running for several years. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's part of, it was part of the Leicester Mercury. It's been running for several years. It's at the OB race course. And it was a, uh, a show that was designed for everybody. Yeah, right? it's like a family day out. Absolutely. So we sat down and we had a conversation. And I think the, the gist of it was I was trying to figure out a date to do a Yanomise event yep. yeah. without conflicting with them because there's no point in doing yeah. it. So the idea initially was we do a Yanomise event when we could. Yep. We don't, I didn't want to piss them off and, and go step on and, their toes oh, kind of thing. Absolutely. Listen, yeah. why, there's, no, there's no need for it. Yeah. And, and when I've done other events and other stuff, I always talk to people. Yeah. Um, and um, it came out then and said, look, you know, there's no point doing two events. You might as well take this over, and which we did. So, yes, it will be in August, August the 18th uh, at the Leicester Motor Show. Um, birthday weekend. So That's it. What's there. that? My birthday weekend. Is it? Uh, yep. well, there yeah. you go. We'll have to get there. you on stage because there will be a stage. <laughs> um, but we've, we've supercharged the event. Yeah. There's no two ways about it, right? So we've provisioned it up to, you know, so they normally get 10,000 people. Yeah. We know we'll get 25, 30,000 people. It's a free event, right? But what we have done this time round is yeah. we've spoken to the Sitna group. Yep. Every manufacturer is now coming, right? So we've got Porsche, Ferrari, Lamborghini, Maserati, oh, wow. Aston Martin, you name it, we've got them all exhibiting. We've now also got a VIP paddock. Um, where we've kept it, kept it, because kids love cars, right? So yeah, kids, for the kids, it's free of charge. You know, what I was going to just mention. Sorry, I, I should have said this before, but you know how you said you want to make Yanomais a household name. Yeah. You know, in the car scene, yeah, everyone literally knows what Yanomais is. Yeah. So when you mention an event and it's linked with Yanomais or Yanni or yeah. Yanomais doing it, everyone's yeah. in. It's like 
that people, you know, kids, yeah, they're already looking forward to it. I'll tell you that. I think yeah. your name alone brings in around 15,000. In the moment, it's a powerhouse, isn't it? That's yeah, it's like, oh, Yanomise is there, let's go. Yeah. No, I think, I think it'd be an amazing event. I think, look, we've got every manufacturer. Listen, the only, we've got two manufacturers that have said no in Leicester. And, I <laughs> and is there a reason? I don't know. I think, I was shocked. Who it, you know, they Mercedes Benz turned around and said, We don't want to exhibit, it's not part of what, what? our yeah, they do. They, they said that they're it's not our audience, they, no, they said their brand direction has changed. Okay, I went, Well, so, so what are you saying? Well, People haven't changed. Well, Leicester's a big Mercedes yeah. customer yeah. base, right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> if you're Massive Indian customer. in Leicester and you're not driving <laughs> yeah. a Mercedes, it's not right, so something's not right. So, Mercedes and Audi at the moment are in question. Um, but every other manufacturer from Ford to Kia to Porsche, they're all in. They're all oh, in. Oh, that'd be amazing. Um, and it's, and it's going to be a great event. Um, is there like food vendors going to get involved? Yeah. Um, so what we've done is we've created a VIP paddock. Yep, so yep. we've got loads of cars in there. So that we kept that ticket price really low. We kept yep. that like, you know, so but kids are free, but the adult pays five pounds. Yeah, yeah. But the entry to everything else with the fun fair and the go-kart and all the and then all the rest of it is all free of charge, right? So for us, it, we've got loads of food vendors, loads of things to do. It's 10 till 4. Um, I think our biggest challenge is going to be spectator parking. <laughs> but I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll get it sorted. But there's, there's, there's opportunities for car clubs because yeah. we've got areas for car clubs and people to display their cars. Give them my little golf down. <laughs> <laughs> why not we don't discriminate you know that's another thing we did an event yeah and uh we put a poll out we said would you rather us mix the cars up so like you got a lamborghini svj this. next to a golf for yeah. example or would you like to separate yeah so go on get what do you what do you think that people say i go to loads of events um i i like it separate i like to go to like yeah oh yeah this is the japanese cars or this is the whatever cars. this is the classic cars i like it like that i think it kind of depends on what car you drive because if i was in a lambo i'm like yeah get the golf from sure. but <laughs> another thing is you get car clubs like that so you get you car do. clubs who let in any cars just as long as they chill together or they cruise together drive together but then you get car clubs which is specifically for one type well, of car. car yeah so the lion's share of people mm. actually said they prefer it if all the cars were mixed. Yeah. They prefer it. So Lambo next to a Ford, next to, you know, a Subaru. I think it's nice to, to see because you won't normally see those cars should, around. Should I tell you what well. they said? Another thing. Oh. It's good to be mixed it because then people don't just be with their own mates. People talk to each other. Each other. If your car's yeah. next to a guy who owns a Lamborghini, for example, you're going to chat to him. And you're a car enthusiast because you're there. So and everyone talks. It creates conversation. It, it creates it? community. Yeah, it does. You're absolutely So right. if someone did want to become involved, how do they get in touch or how do they get involved? Um, well, if anyone wants to sort of, in any form or fashion, so yeah. the, the tickets are on Eventbrite. So even yeah. if you want a free ticket, you we'll have the link down below anyway. Um, and uh, everyone's just been dropping us an email, which is you know live at yanomise.com. So people are just emailing us and saying, we want to sponsor it mm. or we want to exhibit or mm. we want to bring my car down and display it. So we've, we've got it all covered. And we officially launched the event on um, Boxing Day. That's the plan. Oh, wicked. That's the plan. Um, where, well, where do you see we the event? Need, we might need an MOT company to sort of uh, come and, uh, yeah, yeah. Come, uh, come and, I'm going to be there with my Zap Me Up card. So even like, you know, with his, you know that card that he's given you, the Zap Me Up card? Yeah. So what used to happen before, someone would come to my garage, yeah. they'll put the right car right outside, so block my entrance, they'll go into the office, or they'll wait till someone's free to book an MOT. Now, I've got a card, I go up to them, I'll pull your phone out, please. I tap it, yeah, I open yeah. it for them, and then I say, just drive around the corner and then you can just book it. So that card is actually registered to my account. So when you, when you, when you start using it, yeah. my cousin <laughs> is actually going to disconnect it and he's going to and just message him and I'll reconnect everything for you and you can just customize it the way you want. Amazing. That's cool. And Thank literally, you. it just got a link to everything. It's just like proper digital business card. I use them as well every day. So good. But I think I, I know a few people who want to get involved in the show. So I will, that's how you get in contact. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to talk about I'll get him to reach out has to been you. announced recently, the Grand Tour 2024. Yeah. Oh, the sold God. out Grand Tour. <laughs> Already sold out? Sold out. Sold oh out? Yeah, we're done. We're Last out. thing I heard, like, yeah, I think there's a few left, but I knew it'd sell out. Yeah, I thought there was a few. And I've seen so, the comments. So we're oh, sold out. So we've had applications of oven and beyond what, we can, what we're going to go. So now we're going through the applications. How many tickets have you guys sold? It was 30 places. 30, yeah. 30, 30 places. places. At 50 right. grand a car. 25 grand a car. Oh, 25 grand a car? 25 grand. Okay. Wow. Yeah. 
we're sold out. We're oversubscribed as we sit right now, but we're now going through all the application forms to make sure you've got the right people. We've got we're, we're right hand selecting people. people. Yeah, yeah. So now it's, now it's like picking cherries. Yeah, no, it's it's picking the right people. Yeah, picking yeah. the right mix. You know, you're spending nine nights with other people, right? Yeah. So you've got to, you know, it's. Uh, what well, what's the process? What 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 do you look at um, when you pick people to come? Well, um, first thing, what doesn't matter is what you drive. Doesn't matter. No, it yeah. doesn't matter what you drive or where you come from. So, or in your age, does that does not matter? Um, for us, we want to make sure if you're, you know, you run your own company, you're you're your old class is legit, you're good, you're in good standing, you you know, you have a bankrupt companies and you know, they just if you're just an old standing if you're a good standing yeah. person. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what it takes. You know, so you haven't done nothing wrong, you're not nothing into anything shady, you're just a good person. You're just a good you're guy. Doing, yeah, you're just a good guy. Yeah. You know, and doing a good thing. And, and bring good vibes around because there's gonna be loads of people. They don't want to yeah. be and they've paid a lot oh, of money. You don't want no one negative. We've got couples yeah. that are doing it. Okay. Right? So again, so, you know, yeah. husband and wife, they don't want to be you know, they paid so a lot of money for that, and at the end of the day, for the experience, and you the just don't want it. Bad it's going to be, you know, when we, we've, I've actually set up the the WhatsApp community group. Oh yeah, uh, and we'll um, we'll get everyone in that is done. Can you imagine the type of people yeah. that are in that WhatsApp group? Right, <laughs> you're, you're gonna have you're gonna have thirty drivers and thirty passengers. Of they're all of the same ilk, right? Yeah. Enthusiasts. Can you, imagine that, group, can you imagine that crazy. WhatsApp group? I mean, listen, I'm in the what because obviously I've done the gumball, right? Yeah, so I was just about to ask. So did it, did this like idea come off that like, gumball or we've always we we've always wanted to do another tour, yeah, yeah. the first one. Um, but I learned a lot doing the gumball. Yeah. But can you imagine? I mean, I'm in the gumball WhatsApp group. Can yeah. you imagine <laughs> how powerful that group is? How yeah. powerful that network is. You have got people. That's something money can't buy. You can't listen. There's people in that. Uh, forget owning companies. There's people in that WhatsApp group that run countries, <sighs> that own countries. The shakes. I just want to. How much do you think that WhatsApp groups were? Sure, <laughs> ah, right. I tell you, you I, can't I, put a number I, on I, it. I'd be struggling to go to any country in the world and not have a gumballer in there. Oh wow, that is. I'd be struggling. I'd that's struggle. Something else. That's I'd something str- else. There's people in there putting out. I'm in this country. Can anyone help me do this or da-da? Straight away, instant. Yeah. That is the, absolutely... It's the, the, you know, network like that, you, literally, you can not get anything in the world, but if you ever get stuck, it's just there, available, yeah. on demand, isn't it? But that's, that's something I did on... Um, something similar I did on um, Instagram. Okay. So I... Tr- I you know, so I, I set up a, another Instagram account because I wanted to help people. Yeah. And not, not, not for financial gain, but just help people. I thought, it's nice, because I, I, I've got some knowledge. If someone needs help, I did it. And then it... It sort of, I did it and I didn't do it. And I thought, hold on a second, I want to create a community. So on my Instagram, I decided to do a subscribe page on Instagram. So right. And I put in 99p, you can subscribe to Instagram. And it was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And I said, look, it's not going to me. We're going to just, the group can decide which charity to send the money to. Yeah, right? yeah. So I did that. And the, an Instagram, you create a group. So anyone who subscribed for 99p, you create a group with those people. And it's great. Everyone talks, but the group expires. <laughs> only last 28 days so what we've done now is we've community we've done that and we've migrated all the subscribers into whatsapp okay and I tell you what is it's crazy because in there there's different topics in in whatsapp which we've set up yeah so we've got property we've got investment we've got um general chat we've got car chat all these little boxes oh, really? we've got in there and if you subscribe Everyone goes in there. And I, honestly, I sit back and watch this and yeah. one guy rang me up and he goes, look, Fab, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie to you. I've just done two property deals out of it. Out of the WhatsApp group? And it says for 99p and it goes to charity. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. That's a good investment in itself. I was like, oh my God. And they're like, yeah, no, no. It's, and everyone helps each other in the group. Already I can see mm. it because someone's going, I'm looking for car finance. What do you think I should do? Da, 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 da. And people are helping them. Or do you know? And there's so many connections being Exchange. Throwing around, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Massive. You I think there's about 200 people in the group, right? There's 200 people in the group and they're all helping each other. And that's something, like I said, it's 99 people, but really money can't that, buy that. It's well, a, I and, and I mean, Andrew Tate is similar to that Hustlers University, but he's charging, what, 50 quid a month or something? <laughs> <laughs> like, and, this is the, and then in the group, that's where the money, the money goes to charity. The group decide, the community yeah. decides where it goes. But I said, you can't get access to the WhatsApp group because I locked it off unless you're a subscriber. And if you, if you have to quibble about 99p, you're in the wrong group. Yeah, it ain't for you. You know, no, it's not for you. I've had people go, can you not just put me in the group? I went, what, you short of 99p? 
<laughs> that's great. Do you know what I mean? I'm not literally, man, what are you doing? Sense, man. That's that's right, right, but but right. people, but people that are in it are seeing the benefit and they're going, "Oh my god, and thank you for the help." Words. But yeah, so it's quite good. Um, always give back, always give back a little bit of group. advice. <laughs> Might have another another member of the group. Yeah, <laughs> but um, always try and give back a little bit. Got another question. So, do you mind sharing what is uh, a day in Bob's life? So, what is your daily routine? Every day is different. Every day. Every, so, um, recently. Uh, um, so we've got Milton Keynes where we do the car wrapping. Yep. We've got Enfield, which we turned into a media centre, mm. um, and that team are there. And we've also got an office in Weybridge. Okay. So where we've got um, uh, people that look after the web website and the and the uh, graphic design and and some of the customer services is done there as well. And we had to uh, move offices. Uh, we didn't I chose to move offices because where we were wasn't suitable. So we went into a bigger office. Uh, and where are, where my office is now? I've, we've got our own gym in there. And, oh, okay. And different. It's in a bar and a coffee shop, and it's, it's a better environment. So my routine has all to, all, also changed. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. now it's sort of get it, get up, get out, get to the office, go and train. Because yeah, exactly. Then, you don't need to go gym, so, then yeah. go office. Uh, but it. like yesterday, it was get up, get. You know, I trained at home yeah. yesterday, and then I'm in Enfield because we had meetings in Enfield yesterday. So every day is different. But in essence, it's normally get up, exercise in some form, straight to the office, um, and then and, and see what the day holds, really. That's uh, crazy. But yeah. But like today, yesterday was Enfield, today was Leicester. You know, and it's... And, the, and, and the, how in advance do you plan? Um, I, at least two weeks. Oh, I yeah. try to. But you have to be fluid. Yeah. So um, come... So today's Thursday, right? So Tuesday, um, I was at Silverstone. I had a meeting with those guys because they want to talk to me about events and what we want to do. Mm. So and that came on from last week. And they're like, are you, are you free? I said, yeah, look, I've, it's relatively clear. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. So I could be all over the place. So yeah. there's no two days that are same. But what is consistent is um, me trying to stay healthy in my mind by exercising and doing that. And also having a bit of a balance. So that's the plan. Um, here's a question I like to ask everyone. Where do you see yourself? Oh, it's two different. It's two part question. Where do you see yourself in five years, and where do you see Yanomai as a holding in five years? I think Yanomai will just grow. Yeah, it will just continually grow. I see Yanomai being more international. I'd yep. like I'd like to go into other territories. I think UK is great. It's an amazing place, but you know, there's only so. It's much. even a great place to start. Yeah, look, we've 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 hit the market here, right? Yeah. So we're going to do these events, we're going to do these tours, we're going to do more events up and down yeah. the country. Um, I can see us doing more in the US. Yeah. Um, we've got a great fan base in India. I can see us doing stuff in India. I can see stuff in Dubai. I don't see there's a I don't see us caged to the UK. So I can only see the next five years as expanding. And I think even like going back to social media is helping. Like going. It, like, I've been in India a lot because my family's from there so yeah. like every couple of years, but I see it changing. I see literally the car culture changing, even like with motorbikes and stuff, the culture's changing. They're becoming more like us. They're literally, they're they're, becoming they are more becoming more like, yeah, they're becoming westernized, but westernized it's, bec it's happening quick now. It yeah. is. Like I've just been in April and I'm going back in January and I know it's going to change. I know it's already changed because I see it in the pictures and stuff. I think what it is like, we've, we've, like the UK, we've kind of like stayed a bit like that, but all these other countries that are kind of catching up, they've, they've yeah. caught up. Yeah. They've caught up like Africa, they've massively caught up. There's some people like some of the businesses out there that are doing so well. India, they've massively caught up. And I think that's what's going on at the minute. The yeah, UK it's, it's almost like, like not being rude, but it's like someone's really turned the light on there. Yeah. And yeah. And yeah. Gone, yeah. 100%. Oh my days, look, this is this yeah, is the real this world. Is this is up. And, and technology helps, right? Yeah. Massively. 100%. Massive. Yeah, I, listen. Uh, if you, if you don't keep up, then you're just going to get left behind. That's but what yeah, it is. And, and you can see what's going on in there because it's in the it's in your hand. Yeah. How else did you find out what went on in the growth factor in India, what was changing? You didn't, unless yeah. someone told you. They yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now it's there. It's on social media. Brands are going there. You know, Massive. Launches are happening. There's so many brands going like all over now. Exactly. So I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of I think it's evolution, not revolution. It's evolution. It's, it's just going, the growth is there, isn't it? And all over the world. And what about where do you see yourself in five years? Do you think do you think you'll still be with the animals group, or do you think yeah, you, right. you'll get to that stage where you think, oh, tick tick tick, I've done it all now. Oh, it's all. I think I, I don't think so because I think every day is so different. <laughs> you know, we're nearly three years in, and it's totally different. Honestly, it's, I can it's, imagine. it's evolving. We've always got something different. This year we started events. Next year we're doing the tour. The tour we'd like to think is an annual thing. 
the events is going to get bigger. I bet you've got events planned in your head that no one really knows about yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and there you like, go. But they're, but they're not just in my head. We're actually doing about it. Oh, okay. Doing, so they're already yeah, taking yeah, plans. Yeah, we're, Blueprint set. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, for us now, I'm looking at 2025. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so, so you're we're, there. And we're just kind of getting yeah, introduced to yeah, 2024. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're, we're looking at 2025. We're looking way beyond. And what we're trying to do is like the Leicester event is a yearly event now. So every year we'll be in Leicester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's wow, not just okay. going. It's not just 18th of August and, and the next day it's over. 18th of August is done. This this is now. So the takeover is basically now every year. Every so that's year, what it is. every year, every year. So we've already done the date for. So our first event was Mercedes Benz World, yeah. um, which was in August. We've already got next year's date locked in. It's done. So eight, you know the sixth of May next year is Mercedes Benz World. Every year we're at Mercedes Benz World. So there's a yanomized car event at Mercedes Benz World every locked year. Locked in basically done. There's a, there's a Leicester event, the motor done. show, done. There's X and Y, which will be coming out, done. Is there anything that you can tell us about X and Y? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. What, what, I can, what, what I can tell you is there's a lot of uh, interesting people that are doing the Yanomai's Grand Tour and people are going to be shocked. Oh, really? Yeah. And I'll tell you one thing. The launch party is... Uh, yeah, it's going to be like a little mini, you know, mini jingle bell ball um, with with artists and celebrities. Okay, yeah, so cool. it's going to be, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be watch amazing. this space then. Yeah, yeah? definitely. Is that All something right. that you look forward to? Think and think, yeah, I can't wait till this happens, man. Not because you're in it. Yeah, you know, yeah, you're in it. You don't. You yeah. just, it's just part of life. It just happens it? around you, you know. Absolutely. Uh, it just happens around you. So. Um, I want to talk a little about a little bit about the cars. Uh, what do you currently own? What's your daily driver? What you've driven in there today? Uh, my daily driver is my GT3 RS. Um, I've done over four and a half thousand miles on it. It's the most used GT3 RS outside of Porsche's press car Boom. in the world. Um, it's a like weapon, people, isn't it? People are like, you're mad. This is worth 400 odd grand. What's your miles per gallon in that? Yeah, no, it's quite good to be fair. It's about 20 miles to the gallon. So but what's your smiles per gallon? That's uh, the question. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is so, the question. So, yeah, look, bro. I got that and I bought a, a, I got a new Eurus S this year, um, yeah. which I use as well. Mm. And then my Aventador, which I bought back in 2018, I've got that, which is the one we used for the KSI, KSI fight. fight. Yeah. <laughs> so people didn't, people didn't clock it. Yeah. Uh, so people were like, yeah. hold on, when you, I saw the blue inside a little bit. That was your car. I said, yeah, it was, yeah. And then when it came out, Everyone knew. Everyone realised. Completely off topic. Do you think electric is going to be the new thing? Because I know Porsche are working on a carbon neutral fuel. Yeah, they're working on a synthetic I know Top fuel. Gear, they showed a bit of yeah, it. Yeah, they're where. working on a Look, I think it has a place. I think the car, I mean, look, I get, I've got a great relationship with Porsche, right? They, yeah. gave, they gave me a take. Yeah. They said, take, keep going, try it, try it, try it. When you drive the take and when I got in the car, and did it, all the technology, the drive, perfect. Couldn't fault it, mm. right? Amazing car beautiful car great forget the values and forget the depreciation there's a big buck coming yeah. there's a big yeah. buck <laughs> big but is we don't have the infrastructure yeah, yeah, and yeah if i come into leicester today for example and if i got stuck like i did yesterday i got stuck yesterday on the motorway from enfield took me two hours i seen it on instagram two hours over two hours right mm. and if i'm doing that and i'm in an electric car and you're stuck and i'm stuck and, and if i stop out. At the services, and more often than not, I see the charge stations at the services not yeah. even working or they're, they're full. Yeah, oh, I don't need the headache. I don't, I, you know. We're not ready for it, I think, in this country. I think in other countries, they are ready for it, maybe. I think the Nordics, they've got the charging infrastructure, yeah, they've yeah. invested big money. And, they, and you go into you go to a Nordic country, like you know, go to a place like Sweden or whatever, mm. there's loads of Tesla, loads. loads of electric cars, but they've got the process, they've got the system right. Here, mm. we don't. You know, we don't have it right. Literally, no, all the all. charges are out of order when you pull up to them. How did the take and feel compared to the GT3? <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty chalk and cheese. But, <laughs> but in fairness, I like the car. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's a Porsche. Listen, they're not going to make a crap car, to be honest. Let's be, you know, yeah, they're 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 a very, very yeah. nice car. You know, and and I see a lot of the the Mercedes electric cars. They're great cars. They're great looking cars. Even the like the MPV four x four ones, they look great. Even yeah. like with the wheels, and, I, I think, think they look be, good, man. But I don't know. I think they I think they're too shouty about being electric. I genuinely feel it's like... It's diesel game, yeah. isn't it? It's like when diesel was like the thing, go buy diesel car. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's like, I don't know, they're kind of making the electric cars, yeah, this is electric. And, the, and like, right. you know, the monobrow, the spaceship rims and the weird colours and on the headlights and the it's accents. Shut, shut. I'll, I'll tell you something that... Do you know I, what I mean? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something that I've not like shared that. massively that what I am looking into. Go on. 
What's going to happen to that electric car in 10 years' time when that battery needs recycling? <laughs> Same thing's what happened with the phones, yeah. isn't it? Same thing. Electric cars are going to need MOTs. Just, no, I mean, so, so, reason, what, but so the body will last longer than the battery, yeah. won't it? Yeah. yeah, it will. It will. And the batteries are very, very expensive at the oh, moment. Because you can only buy them from a manufacturer. Yeah. Right? Okay, so what happens when you go to now? You need a head... You're, you're, you're in cars. Yeah, if yeah. someone needs a headlight, you don't go to... BMW, you go to Euro car parts, right? Aftermarket. Yeah. And you get an aftermarket. aftermarket. So yeah. where's the aftermarket batteries now? I don't know. I've never, never even looked. At, is oh, there yeah. even one? So where is, where, what's going to happen? You can't buy aftermarket. The car, the, the, these Teslas are the bulletproof, right? They're going to yeah. last longer than the battery. Yeah. What's going to happen to, there's going to be like, what? A load of Teslas without batteries because the batteries are gone? Oh, it's not. That's great. You know, know, it's, like you know at the moment, yeah, if your battery dies, is it beyond... Yeah, is it beyond economical repair or do yeah, people actually... It's dead, it's dead. Yeah, it's you dead, isn't it? The car's just, done. You can't... Done, right? Yeah, so now you've got me thinking about that. What, what actually happens? And then why hasn't it already been done? Watch this space. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it first, batteries, yeah? yeah. You heard it first. Um, that's been a great podcast, to be honest. It's been an amazing podcast. It's been really good. Well, thank you very much, gents. Thank you very much for coming on, Bav. We really um, appreciate that. In the future, as Chase said before... He's going to be on the road, so I think we're going to have to do one in the garage, you know. Really? When you're back in Leicester one time. Oh, uh, yeah. We well, you might need an MOT you one day well, GT3 RS. Yeah, yeah, you you know what? We'll get the M GT3 RS for an MOT, and then we'll all sit around and have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and some biscuits. Yeah. Well, and you're, some, you're, some biscuits. You're basically going to sit there and go, this is the reason why your MOT's failed, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then you're going to try and stiff me for doing something that doesn't need doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's not how we work. That's not how we work. <laughs> As long as there's 100 quid in the um, glove box, I'm happy. Yeah, is that, is, that, is that all it is? Yeah, that's it. That's happy it. days. Thank you very much for coming on. Brilliant. Thank you very all much. All the best for the shows. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. I did quickly do a shout out for the sponsors. Big up RS Glass and Glazing Limited. Any glass needs you need, give them a shout. Big up Mama's Kitchen. I think he's been ringing me because he has some food for Bav. This might be him. Big up Zap Me Up card. So I'm going to use my yeah. card, right? Yeah, that's the card. <laughs> He'll know. Yeah. You do the rest because I was quick. Down to this. Big up in brief designs. Um, that's Pratic. And also his new business that he started, Crafted Commitments. And we've got also Flexi Car Hire as well. I know they've got some new cars at the minute. We've got two trainers here. There were two. Um, we've got, I think it's the J Balvin Jordans and the We The Best Jordans. Any trade needs? It's Christmas. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, give them a shout. And if you need to get a present, got the hoodies, 24 And you've got the custom cut, <laughs> which you can't buy. Um, yeah, it's been a great show. Thank yes, you very much, bruv. Perfect, man. Appreciate it's it. It's a wrap. <laughs>